Hi guys, I'm Kier and this is my studio. Today we will be discussing how to get back into painting. And the very first tip I can give you guys is relatively easy. It's just to start small. Not so small where it becomes a challenge, but small enough where you know you can complete it in a relatively short amount of time. Obviously, my small is going to differ from another artist's idea of what small is. A lot of artists like to actually draw big, so small to them could be 8 by 10 It's all up to you. My next tip is to start with a sketch. Having a wide white area to fill up with paint can be daunting at times. Sketching on a canvas or transferring a sketch onto the canvas will give you an idea of where you are headed. It will ground you and make filling up a space seem as less of a task since now you have a visual of where you are headed. You don't need to stay in the confines of the sketch. You know, feel free to color outside the lines. I know I always do, but I guess what I'm trying to say is the sketching are just baselines to help you realize where you're going and have definitely helped me feel less stress than staring at a blank canvas. When you look at a canvas, it's just so plain and just so white. There's endless opportunities of where you can go. So putting a sketch onto the canvas, it's just, it just grounds you, man. It's just like, hey, now you know exactly where you are going so you don't have to overthink things so much. Now this is a tip that has helped me out, but these are also tips that you have to keep in mind are definitely just suggestions because I do actually have artist friends that prefer to just start painting. Like skip the whole sketching part and go straight to putting paint on a canvas. And that could be you. I look at that and I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> but that's me. I can't do that. I need some guidance to make me feel less stressed because you know your girl thinks and overthinks way too much. So having the lines definitely helps. So feel free to sketch before you start painting. My next tip is to use a paint you're familiar with. If you try to start painting with a form of paint you are unfamiliar with, you could run into complications that may discourage you from painting. For example, if you've only ever used oil paint and then you try to switch it up, you know, try something funky, try something new, so you try to switch to acrylic, you will find that these are two very different mediums that you may not be able to use the same techniques with. This can lead to frustration which can make the painting experience unenjoyable. This video is not, you know, a video that's saying how to paint. This video is just a video explaining how to get back into it. Like maybe you fell off because you didn't have time. I know that's what happened to me. I stopped having so much time on my hands and I couldn't paint as much as I used to. And it's been like maybe two years since I painted. So this is for you guys who have also, you know, stopped painting and want to jump back into it. These, these tips are meant to help you get used to the feeling of painting again. Not necessarily painting your next masterpiece, but just getting those hands used to the whole painting process. Tip number four is to paint a subject you're comfortable with. Different artists like to paint different things. Whether it's a scene or an animal or a human, paint what you're comfortable with. Painting something you're familiar with will 
have the same concept as the last tip. If you try to paint something you're unfamiliar with, you may find you don't understand that form as much as you do with the subject you know, which could lead to frustration, which may again lead to having an unenjoyable painting experience. And if you have an unenjoyable painting experience after not painting for so long, then it might deter you from painting again. You want this painting to be something fun, something that you like, something that you may even consider easy, just something that's going to help push you get back into the habit of painting. If you do something hard and complex right off the get-go, you know, for some artists it may be what they need to push them to, to paint, but, you know, for me it would definitely discourage me if it's super hard and making me feel like I'm in super struggle mode, like sitting right in the back of the bus, the struggle bus. Beep, beep, there I am. <laughs> so it's like I don't want to feel that way after I haven't paint, painted anything in a while. I kind of want to feel like I know what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> since at one point in time, I may have known what I was doing. So I find that doing something that you like and doing something that you may consider easy helps take that stress out and makes you want to paint more. This segues into my next tip. I want you guys to think of this as an exercise. Although we are going for a completed project, especially since we're doing it on canvas, try to think of it more as a study of the medium that you're using whatever paint whatever what excuse me whether that's watercolor oil or in my case acrylic you know feel like just just say hey you know i'm just studying how this paint works again nothing too major for the first painting don't try to make it this huge masterpiece with a brilliant concept this could lead you to overthinking the whole process, worrying if the painting is conveying the right message, or worrying if the execution matches the level of creativity you were trying to reach. This is entirely too much stress over a piece that should just be for studying. Just paint a simple subject in a decent amount of time to get your hands used to painting again. My next tip would be to use a limited range of colors. I would suggest no more than 10 colors, including black and white. And honestly, like if you could, I would even say go for a monochromatic theme. And why, you may ask. Why can't I use a bunch of colors? Well, I'm again, I'm just trying to reiterate the fact that you want this to feel as easy and as natural as possible and when you're doing monochromatic colors it's easy to just see the values see where you need to paint the different shades and different tints different values it's easy but once you start adding color into that things can get a little bit more complex so in this painting i used seven colors and i really didn't even want to use that much but when it came to the nose and i had to add a pink and all that mumble jumbo i'll list everything that i used in the description using a large range of colors just i feel complicates things for now we're just doing a quick study it does not need to be oversaturated just work on painting your values correctly and painting your subject correctly. My last tip would be to do about five of these small bad boys. They should all be paintings with little to no concept, just to study to rejog that muscle memory. You will see the improvement from the first one as compared to the fifth one. Either you will gain more confidence, paint with the same amount of skill in a shorter amount of time, or paint with a greater amount of skill in the same time or less. If you feel as if you didn't gain any of these traits after doing five of these bad boys, then paint more paintings until you do. 
If you feel that you did level up in either confidence, skill, or speed, then now is the time to experiment with cool concepts, a bigger size of canvas, a different medium, or a new subject. Now that you're painting again and painting again with confidence, go and challenge yourself. Learn something new. It may be frustrating at first, but that's just because it's new. Once you do it enough times, it won't feel so complicated and you will realize you can paint whatever the hell you want. <laughs> but that's it, you guys. I'll talk to you in the next video. I love you guys. Bye.